Hola. Eh, bienvenidos, hola. Eh, primero que nada, muchísimas gracias por estar aquí, por haber venido. Eh, os presento un poco quiénes serán las personas que harán el conversatorio con Shivaucher. Eh, la, charla, la charla será toda en inglés y tenemos a Blanca y a Isea, que son parte activa de Industrias MDA, del colectivo que formamos parte y hemos montado el Malas Artes. Y ellas dos han dado forma a todo el contenido de, de este conversatorio. Y ya, bueno, sin más dilación, eh, os, os doy paso. ¿Vale? Merci. So, uh, hi everyone, thank you for coming. I can't see you, but hi. <laughs> uh, we know you're here to hear and speak to Gibraltar. Um, the way we see it, um, well, you may know her uh, because uh, all the art is produced in the course of um, five decades now. Um, the way we see it, if there's a thread that connects all her creative out output, from art school and experimental outfits in the 60s, uh, working as an illustrator in New York in the 70s, of course, crass art and uh, everything she's done afterwards. Uh, if there's a thread that connects all that, uh, that would be her persistence in staying true to her own ideas and the way she successfully portrayed the human dilemma, often exposing contradictions and hypocrisies of the world we are forced to inhabit. So we think there's definitely a lot to talk about in that, and uh, let's start and let's do this. Hi, G. <laughs> Welcome. Could, could you bring the lights down? I can't see a thing. Thank you. This one especially, the top one. Lights. Yeah, better. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is it fine? Okay. So uh, we would like to start from the very beginning, and that would be your, your childhood, your upbringing. Uh, we've read, uh, we know you, you were born uh, after the war, in post-war Britain, um, where do-it-yourself was not a choice, but a necessity. Uh, could you tell us a bit about that? Um, I can answer that. I just about can hear you, but you're projecting out there. There's nothing coming this way. So okay. I find it quite hard to hear you. Okay. So, Sorry. yeah, about my childhood. Um, yes, I was born in London um, on the, uh, the lower side, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, where most people worked for Ford's foundry, Ford's cars. The, sort of that part of London was built to house the workers. Mm. So, um, and I was born the last year of the war, 1945. So, for the next nine years, it was uh, still wartime, really, because of rationing. Mm -hmm. The food was rationed, and but I sort of uh, I did very well because my father had an allotment mm -hmm. where he grew vegetables. Oh, and uh, we had a couple of chickens. So, <laughs> yeah. My my parents were very um, inventive and okay yeah and what about the the landscape of of uh, that environment what was the landscape like yeah did it uh, influence you somehow in your art or well the landscape was just rows and rows of workers council houses yeah yeah government houses small but with gardens. And some bomb sites. The school had been bombed around the corner. And there were fields of, that were left to go wild. So mm -hmm. perfect for growing up. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I get the sense that in the middle of all these adversity, you found some kind of security, like connect interconnection neighborhood um, uh, solidarity in, in those times. And when in your interviews, in your biographies, um, you kind of uh, stress that 
inside all of that sorrow and all of that adversity you found comedy, humor, and, and sometimes absurdity. And I'm wondering whether when, when, we, when we look at your art, there's always some kind of optimism or point of light and in, in the middle of all the um, cor uh, corruption and, uh, and all the isolation and violence you're exposing in, in those arts? I think, I think if you travel you know, to countries that don't fit into the first world, I mean, you very often find that it's the poorest people that give the most, you know, and um, the area that I came from was very poor, and they'd all had to leave the centre of London to come away from the bombing, and there was little. There was little to have around, so everybody shared. Everybody made something from nothing. Not everybody, I have to say, my parents were the best at that, but, um, but they would make things for other people. So the whole street would be an exchange all the time. Yeah, and it was, I thought that was how everybody lived. Yeah. You grow up thinking everybody shares and everybody gives, but then you realize it's not quite like that. Um, but it's never left me, so um, I don't, you know, I just can't see any way forward with the world that is in the state at the moment, that's for sure. You know, unless we, unless we give, unless we share, unless we become kinder people, mm. you know, there's not much hope really, <laughs> yeah. as far as I'm concerned. Because always greed, power, avarice will, will override your innate kindness, which you're born with. Yeah. You know, every child gives you what they have. <laughs> and they get to a certain age where they, they don't, they take it back again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I very much believe in, um, you know, keeping the child within, keeping the curiosity, mm -hmm. keeping the, the joy of, yeah. the joy of life really, the joy of this world. It's a beautiful world we live in, you know, it's, um, it's just fucked up by people. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But that doesn't mean beauty doesn't exist. It's just finding your way through it, really. And yeah. You know. And connected to that, uh, do you think art or uh, creativity uh, can help in in doing this, in staying connected with the uh, with the inner child? Or do I think that art can help? Did you yes. say? I think creativity, and not just art. Creativity yep. in everything that we do. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be the big arts, music, painting, all the, the rest of it. It can be, you know, it can be the way you make a cake, a cup of tea, yeah. you know, the way you wash up. I mean, it, it's, if it's creative, it's, it's, got a, it's, it's boundless. It has so much, mm -hmm. it's so much potential. Yeah. If you are doing all those things and resenting it, then it's bad energy, it's bad news for everybody. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like everything that you do in the day, for me, you know, is a new experience. It's mm -hmm. a new way of approaching something. You know, the washing up is not always the same dishes. It's different. <laughs> you know, it's kind of, you know, it's kind of... Uh, but yeah, I have the studio and I go in the studio and I try to express something that has occurred to me. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So. Yeah, yeah it's but it doesn't just happen in the studio. It happens, for me, it happens all the time. Mm -hmm. It has to because that's what makes my art. Yeah, you know, it's, it's like kind a, of how I approach yeah. other things. You know, yeah, the simplest things. So. Yeah, so it's like a way of looking at the world, really. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, so, um, I'm sorry, we will continue speaking about art and creativity then. Um, do you feel there's a difference between art that encourages uh, social transformation or that tries to, to look to the world in a new way and art that, that's um, only provocative or shocking or 
empty, kind of. Like, do you see a difference there? Do I think art is political? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah, but uh, rather, that, do you see a difference between art that's uh, political in, in a way that um, provides a new way of looking at the world, and it's uh, therefore uh, can transform uh, the reality, so to speak, an art that's, um, well, not so political or uh, only provoking or... Well, I mean I, I mean, I think all art is political, even if it's bad art, mm -hmm. you know, in the sense that it, it, it's not really saying anything, it's got no passion or it's mm -hmm. got no depth or I don't know, whatever. You know, it's, um, my art is not always, well, my art isn't overtly political, it's not p party politics. Mm -hmm. You know, it's about what I might see or feel is wrong, mm -hmm. you know, um, in society, and I try and approach it. Um, it's really direct. You have to work at it, mm -hmm. you know, to, uh, I think, I think you have to work at it to understand. Yeah. Um, I mean, this image, oh, it's not here at the moment, but the, <laughs> <laughs> the other image you had earlier, that you've taken away, um, you know, people interpret that Lesson. very, very differently. This one. So that's been interpreted very differently in America. Mm -hmm. I mean, when it was first used in America, it was the Twin Towers. Mm -hmm. And people were using it for the despair, mm -hmm. the sadness, the horror of it all. But then it was used again mm -hmm. with Trump. Yeah. In like, and it's totally a different meaning you're putting onto it. Yeah. You know, it's kind of uh, not despair. Well, it's despair, but for <laughs> yeah. a different reason. Yeah. But I mean, all art is like that. You can't dictate how, yeah. how to see it, how to read it. I mean, you can get direction and uh, yeah. you might get some illumination. Mm -hmm. um, but um, I don't set out to do that. No. Okay. No. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> and in this sense, uh, G. Um, also in the day-to-day, -day, as you were saying, not only in art, but also in, the, in our day-to-day -day experiences, we feel that uh, also in counter-cultural events like this one and in resistant movements, we, som we sometimes uh, get the impression that when we live in the gap, when we struggle in the edge and when we sustain contradictions, we take risks and we are... Um, some kind, somehow rejecting total coherence, and we are um, in the most uncomfortable position because we are not uh, purists. But we feel that there, there is more richness and more potential for transformation because um, uh, we are dealing with contradiction in everyday lives. Do you think that works for art too? No, not really. Um, I think it only works if you, you point it towards yourself. I don't think you can point a figure at society mm -hmm. or governments or whoever it is, your mother or your dad, mm -hmm. you know, whatever. You have to look to yourself. You really have to ask the questions. It's a painful journey. Mm -hmm. You know, it's uh, things you don't want to think about. Mm -hmm. You know, there's things that you, you, you don't really understand. You know, you don't even know why you believe certain things. Was it your choice or was it the state, the church, the school that, you know, made you think like this? So you have to kind of start stripping, stripping the onion, really. It's kind of like, and try and find out where, where, where are you in all this, you know? We've, every person born has enormous potential, and yet how many achieve it? You know, how many even begin to seek it? It's kind of like, it's taken away from us by the state by the mm -hmm. school, by the family. It's not done on purpose. Well, the state does it on purpose, of <laughs> so does the school. <laughs> but your parents usually don't do it on purpose. But they can't, they can't see the potential outside of the norm. Mm -hmm. You know, you need to get a job. You need to have two and a half kids. You need to have a mortgage. You need to have this. this. And we know that you don't have to do this. There's another way, and you have to find it. And it's not 
It's not easy. Nobody says this is easy. Incredib it's incredibly hard because you can't do it alone. Mm -hmm. So you have to find a person or a group of people where you really can drop your egos, drop your fears, let go and mm -hmm. go forward mm -hmm. in a solid, different way. And it's, it, isn't, it isn't easy. You know, it's, um, it's incredibly demanding. And you can really demoralize yourself sometimes yeah. because you think, well, I've just done it again. I didn't mean to do that, <laughs> you know. But it's like incrementally you change it, you change it. It's not going to change overnight. And I'm still changing. I'm like however old I am, you know. But, you know, each day there's something new, there's something to uncover. You know, there's no perfection here. Yeah. You know, it's kind of on and on. You know, you get a new experience, you go to somewhere new, you suddenly fall over and suddenly you, you've got to pick yourself up again. You know, yeah. how do you do that? You know, and it's kind of, there's no shame in any of it. Mm -hmm. You know, you fail, you pick yourself up again. You fail again, you pick yourself up again. Mm -hmm. That's the way it is. You know, it's kind of, mm -hmm. sometimes you've got people around you to help you, sometimes you, you're on your own. Yeah. I do think creativity, though, helps you a long way, whether you write, you play music, you do art, or you make fantastic cakes, or, as I say, it can be anything, you mm -hmm. know. It's, um, that's a sort of guide for you. It's a release of some of that, um, some of that feeling that you actually can't put into words, you yeah. actually can't do it, do it yet but I can draw it or I can, you know, play it. And that makes a lot of difference. I think it gives you a, a better route somehow, a more solid route. Yeah. You know. Yeah, it gets you grounded somehow, right? Yeah, it's your means of expression and you've got to find it mm -hmm. because you have got a means of expression. Yeah. And, and it isn't just punching people in the face, you know. It's kind <laughs> yeah. of like there's another way of doing that. And in that sense of guidance, um, as we are now in uh, this neoliberal context and we kind of think that we can question gender roles, we can question traditional family, we can question many things right now and that's fine, that's towards freedom, but at the same time we feel that we have less and less structure, we don't feel we, we build a community or a commitment and can art or creativity give us some kind of meeting point, some kind of guidance, some kind of solid solidarity. Mm. I have a real problem with a digital age. I wish I hadn't been born into it, quite honestly. <laughs> um, I've had to learn from scratch because obviously it's useful. Yeah. You know, we publish books and we do this, that and the other. We're still putting music out. So you have to learn those tools because the printer will not accept a flat artwork anymore. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's just, it, they may do, but it will cost you a, a lot of money. Yeah. It's better if you put it on a stick and they can just take it off. Um, I, I don't actually, I'm still trying to figure the digital age and people with their phones. I don't have one of those phones. I don't want one of those phones. I, I won't, I feel trapped by stuff like that. And I, I just, feel as if the freedom is less and less and less because of it. And um, I could be totally wrong, I don't know, but I'm still trying to figure it, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, do, I do worry a lot about, especially for women when they're on their phone, young girls, they're not really using their innate power of sensing when there's danger because they're on this you know, mm -hmm. late at night, they're on this. It's not going to save you. You've got to really be aware mm -hmm. there's danger all the time, yeah. Yeah. you know, and it's kind of like, how do you deal with that without being scared? I'm not scared of the night, but I am pretty aware of mm -hmm. the dark corners and mm -hmm. there might be a lone guy walking some distance yeah. behind you. You have to keep aware of it. Mm -hmm. The phone is not going to save you. You know, yeah. it's going it, it it had a, has a possibility, but I don't know. I just find I find that buying into all of that, you've bought into this whole um, structure, government structure, mm -hmm. business structure, you know, capitalist structure. You can't get away from it. You really yeah. can't. I've just had a real problem booking a ticket 
to go oh, home yeah. tomorrow because I didn't have a phone. Oh, of you course. know, I didn't, I didn't have this, I didn't have that. You know, through my friend, I've managed to get the, mm -hmm. the ticket. Yeah. But it's like you suddenly, you becoming a, like a pariah if you <laughs> haven't got a phone and you can't <laughs> yeah. download anything or take photos. And it's very strange. It's really, it's really odd that, you know, you go into places where they only accept card. I won't, I try to walk out again because mm -hmm. I don't want to pay by card. Yeah. It's tracking mechanisms all the time, all the time. They know where every one of you, if you've got one of these phones, they know exactly where you are. Oh, of course. You yeah. know, and it's kind of like, it, and people say, well, it doesn't matter, we've got nothing to hide. And I think, that's not the point. Yeah. You know, we are free spirits, and we should be free spirits, physically, mentally, you know, mm -hmm. in, and it's kind of like, I don't know, I'm still... I'm still um, confused about it all, I have to yeah. say. Yeah, makes sense. And connected to, to this, um, uh, do you think this whole uh, digital environment where we're talking about uh, affects children? Because in your work, I think childhood and children, it's a recurrent uh, motif. Uh, there's a lot of kids in your, in your art, and I, I'm guessing there's... Uh, uh, that you worry about uh, this, this issue. And uh, do you think that, well, that it affects uh, how the, the hierarchies or the environment that children are growing nowadays? I don't know, you see, it's, it's strange because when I was a child, there was no television. Mm -hmm. And then suddenly television was in the room. Yeah. So I seemed, to, I, try to relate it like that, really, how strange that was. I mean, once the, the, we had a tiny little nine-inch screen, because that's what it was in the day, <laughs> and uh, there was only one channel sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember my mother put it on. Every time she put it on, I would sit still. <laughs> and I'd sit really still, looking at this thing. And then I asked my mother one day, I said, can they see me? <laughs> and she said, no. I, she said she wished she said yes. <laughs> because I just jumped up and started running around again, <laughs> causing mischief. But that's how naive you yeah. were. You know, you yeah. just didn't understand. There was this new technology. And now and I'm in the same position again. I don't understand it. Yeah. I have a real problem, you know, with these gadgets. <laughs> yeah. I can't deal with it. I can't. Yeah. And, and they, they actually can see you and hear yeah, you now. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's maybe the difference. Now they, they do see you. Yeah. <laughs> Changing the subject a little bit. Um, what do you think about intimate art? Art that shows your biography, your inner conflicts, your trauma, whatever's in your mind, on your feelings. What about art that doesn't, that's alien to academia, that doesn't come from, doesn't go to the outside, but it comes from the inside. What do you think about art brut, for example? I don't really like, I don't like people like Lucien Fried, you know, and I don't like his work at all. I, it's like hanging out all your angst. I don't work if I'm really upset. I really don't. You know, I don't want to share that um, in that way, anyway. You know, um, Francis Bacon, you know, they all, these guys just kind of lay it all out there. And I'm sure, I know, it is fine art. It's, it's brilliantly done, but it's not for me. I don't, I can't do that. I don't want to do that. I don't want to show that sort of... Mm -hmm pain and confusion. Mm -hmm. I want to share something, as you said earlier, about might inspire people to mm -hmm. go off and do something yeah. different, that yeah. inspired to act, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So no, I don't, I mean, yeah, there's a lot of artists that do that, but I can't say that I like, like mm -hmm. them much. No. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so when you work, do you have uh, the sense that there's an audience? I mean, an no. no, not at no, all. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, I never paint for other people. I paint for yeah. me. Yeah. And if people want to share that, 
then, okay. or ask me to share it, mm -hmm. then I'm very happy to do that. Okay. But no, I couldn't, I couldn't work creating okay. for an audience, no. Mm. Yeah, this is because of a little story I wanted to tell you about uh, this monument in Cáceres, uh, which is one of the few memorials for anti-fascist uh, fighters in the Spanish state. And once it was set in the countryside, uh, someone shoot it. So the author of the, of the sculpture said that someone completed his art, like meaning that we still have fascists in, in this state. Uh, do you feel that sometimes when you do art and someone receives it, do you feel that there, there is a um, conversation, that some, somehow it comes back to you and gives you inspiration as well, or? Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, yes, what one gets back from people wanting to see one's work is invaluable. You know, it's very inspiring, or it's very revealing, mm -hmm. or it can be anything, really, but I think it's, it's very important to listen, listen to your audience, mm -hmm. because they're the ones that are looking at it. I know, well, I can't say I know what my work's about because I, it takes a long time for me to understand what I've just done. Um, it, doesn't, it doesn't always reveal itself straight away. So it can be a year, two years later, and I suddenly understand what mm -hmm. I was trying to get at. So sometimes the audience can inform you of yeah. something you don't know, <laughs> yeah. which is good. Yeah, so... Um, is it important to you uh, for art, uh, your art or art in general, to be accessible for people, like uh, to be distributed in by oh, yeah, means I think, that? Yeah, uh, I mean, I I never sell originals. Um, I never have. Mm -hmm. I don't think my work belongs in private collections, exactly. and not unless it's a public collection, you know, like yeah. a museum. Um, so yeah, um, you know, in that sense, if I'm asked to do a show, I can choose what I like, I don't have mm -hmm. to ask anybody. You know, it's there in, mm -hmm. in the house, yeah. <laughs> uh, taking up a lot of room, uh, but it's there, you know, and I don't, I really, I really wouldn't want to sell to private people, no. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Much sense. as I might be able to, I'd, it doesn't interest me. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, we were talking about childhood before and family, and uh, I work in psychology, and in that context, sometimes uh, parents come really concerned and say, my, ch my child is really, really angry. And I som sometimes um, they, are, they want to change that. And sometimes I tell them um, that people and, and boys and girls sometimes need to transform their melancholy into something that moves them, into something that, that allows us to break out and to do something with that feeling and to change something. And sometimes I, I get the impression that uh, I don't know anything about art, but I get the impression that people that talk through art sometimes do that kind of transformation that like mobilizes feelings into, into action. Do you feel it that way as well? I feel with children, you know, when they're really angry, I mean, I, I, I think nature does the trick. You take them out to this countryside or a mountain or the seaside or, you know, I think nature is very giving, very natural, and a child just wants to punch the shit out of a tree or something. That's fine, the tree has no emotion about this, go ahead. You know, it's not going to fall down. It's kind of like, it's, it's um, I mean, where I live, you know, we have children coming there who have gained enormous confidence with themselves, mm -hmm. uh, with their lives, because they're free to roam. They're free to roam the fields in safety, and um, they've, they've learnt about the countryside. They know what to pick, what not to pick, how to eat, not to eat. So, I mean, I think, uh, you know, it's not just for children. It's the same with adults, you know, if an adult is really... I mean, I think a city it just sucks. <laughs> quite honestly, you know, on every level. I mean, I love the cities, but I would never live in a city. You know, I just think they demand far too much. And, um, you know, I, I always encourage people to move out, go to the countryside, 
you know, find some peace and balance. Mm -hmm. Come back in once you've found that. Mm -hmm. But you can't live with that imbalance in a city. Yes. You know, it will drive mm -hmm. you mad. You start, yeah. you know, you'll start getting yourself into real big trouble because mm -hmm. it gets physical with mm -hmm. a lot of people. You know, you start drinking or you start the drugs, you start that, and, and suddenly your life's over. Mm. It's kind of, um, I very much believe in taking people that are going through a really rough time or are completely lost, mm -hmm. I take them into the countryside. Mm -hmm. You know, I take them, drag them up a mountain. Yeah. You know, physically they get exhausted, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. And, but once they get to the top and look round, they're just like, whoa. Yeah. You, yeah, do, you, yeah. you don't know how it's going to affect them, yeah. you know, but you do know it's not going to do them any harm. Yeah. You know, so it's kind of like giving them a sort of break, a little space yes. to maybe realise something. So. Yeah, it's once again offering a new way of looking at things somehow. Yeah. Right. yeah. A new experience on every level, physically, spiritually, mm -hmm. mentally. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I'm guessing uh, your own surroundings are really important to your creativity too. Yeah, the, where I live is very important yeah. to my creativity. Yeah. 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 Can you tell us a bit about your garden? Because we know you have this garden. Uh, Dow House. Yes. Um, well, Dow House is just going through a transition at the moment. Mm -hmm. We're giving it away. <laughs> <laughs> that um, with uh, it's we were make, we were working towards making a trust, mm -hmm. um, a legal trust, okay. and. Uh, it, it got into lots of, as you can imagine, if it's legal, solicitors, all the bullshit that goes with it. Yes. So we decided to strip away that and go with the word trust. So this is what we're doing with some people that we trust. Yeah. So, so it's going to be based on, based on that. And hopefully when I live with a guy called Penny Rambo, so once we've gone, mm -hmm. um, the people that will be in the house will continue the spirit of the house, which oh. is an open house, yeah. 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 That's great. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. we hope so, but there's nothing you can do about it once you're gone, so... Yeah. <laughs> we try to put everything in place. Yeah. Yeah, so... Well, you can't control everything, so but let's hope it goes as mm. planned. Yeah. 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 Uh, okay. Sorry, we have like a, a, a um, set of questions, but we're doing it completely different. It's great. Mm -hmm. So, um, okay. Mm, we, um, okay, I'm, I'm changing subjects slightly. Uh, going back to your art, like what you've done in the course of the years, and uh, at least, I don't know if it's our impression, if it's true or not, or if it's something that people has, uh, have uh, written about, uh, but um, there seemed to be a transition in your work from an openly political art to art that's way more uh, introspective or personal. Uh, well, I mean, obviously the work I did with Christ with the band um, was reflective yeah. of what we were doing okay. at, the, at the time. Oh. Yeah, we have some pictures and, yeah. And, um, yeah, so, we, I mean, the whole band was galvanized towards trying to change the world, mm. like you do, you know. <laughs> yes. And, um, and we said all we could say on that respect. In 1984, we thought, we, we, if we say it again, it's just repeating. We did it the best we could, and it's still there. You know, and nothing's changed, of course. Um, and then when the, we finished with the band, a lot of us had to take care of elderly parents. Mm. So suddenly it was more domestic, more mm. small, a small world, not the, the world out there. And I suppose, yeah, from that, my mm -hmm. work changed, yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah we have a... La siguiente imagen, por favor, Guillem. So, yeah, we... This is, uh, yeah. this is just messing about with pastels mm -hmm. because all the, the work I did for Crass was with a very, very fine brush, yeah. which um, it was kind of like a band around my head <laughs> yes. in the end. Yes. So I'm trying to break away. It's not very big, 
this portrait is it mm -hmm. on paper. It's mm -hmm. just pastels, which are very quick and easy to work mm -hmm. with. So yeah. loosening up. Yeah. And then yes. they've, things have got bigger. Yes. So. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And yeah. Um, do you think that like all the decisions that you took throughout your lives and your relationship with the industry, with institutions or with the academy, uh, do you think those decisions have evolved, also evolved during your life? And do you think that made your path a lonely road? Do you think it's like that because you, you took these solid decisions during your life? Do, do you think, do I think I'm on a lonely road, did you say? Do you think, it, yeah, it was a lonely road? No, we say road. it was lonely. No, but I am quite ignorant of what's going on in the art world. Mm. Um, it doesn't particularly interest me. Mm -hmm. um, when I do feel like going to the galleries, I usually go to the traditional ones because there's old masters that I really love to see that mm -hmm. give me a real lift. But if I go into a, a small gallery with somebody's work up. I just, it kind of leaves me cold. You know, I try yeah. really hard to understand what young people are trying to put on the walls, but it seems so devoid of soul. Yes. And I, I just can't figure it. It's all clever ass stuff, mm. yeah. you know, and, but I'll keep trying because it's important. Mm -hmm. But I do go and see some of my favorite um, old masters and mistresses. <laughs> and who are they? Can you tell us some oh. names? No. <laughs> I have a mixture, really. Picasso. Okay. Um, some of the sort of uh, French women artists during mm. the Impressionists. Okay. Um, a, assortment, really. It's all yeah. called how I'm feeling. Yeah. 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 Okay. Thank you. <laughs> um, um, okay, uh, going back to uh, the different elements in art and even techniques, um, um, we think uh, your art has the ability to uh, kind of undermine uh, the great societal uh, narratives. Oh, good, yes, I think that too. Great, yeah. <laughs> we agree on that, perfect. That's, if I do anything, it's about undermining, undermining, just keep undermining. Exactly, And yes. it's so subtle sometimes that the, those up there don't see it at all. Uh, we do see it, yes, and we like but it. I realize that a lot of young people do see it, and they, you know, maybe, maybe take yeah. inspiration from that. But yes, yeah, so, so I think so all you can do is undermine yes. the structure that we have, yeah. you know, because yeah. That you can't beat it face on. No. Not anymore. No. <laughs> okay, uh, we have some pictures. For the Upasa. Next. Well, um, it's an old crest one, that one. Yes, we have uh, some questions about crest, but I prefer these ones. No, it's <laughs> changed. Uh, no. Um, Talking about undermining the uh, structure, uh, we, ha we have a few questions about that. Um, uh, we see uh, one of such structures uh, could be the family, as, as uh, something that conditions us from early on. And I think we can see that in some of your collage work, such as uh, this uh, domestic yes. violence thing. Domestic violence. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, uh, how do you feel about that, about um, family and trying to, to reflect on that? Well, I think, you know, I just, um, it intrigues me, you know, what is behind everybody's front door. Mm -hmm. Because domestic violence is, is a, an enormous problem in every country. Yes. And, um, you know, especially in Britain during the COVID lockdown, it went up, up, up. Mm -hmm. And uh, we did a series of uh, recordings that raised money for a, a mm -hmm. um, refuge. It's called Refuge. It's mm -hmm. for, um, it is particularly for, you know, domestic violence victims. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and it was good, very successful, raised a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, hopefully helps somebody along the way. Yeah, yeah but. Um, <laughs> Yeah, domestic violence always um, interests me. 
because it has so many different ways of, mm -hmm. of obliterating someone, you know, mm -hmm. whether it's mental stress, physical mm -hmm. stress, you know, the physical one, everyone thinks domestic violence is that, but it's very subtle, it can be really mm -hmm. subtle, especially against women. Yes. But that's not to say it doesn't happen to blokes too, because if the woman's really domineering, Mm -hmm. you know, and, and controlling, then it can happen the other way around too. But obviously, more or less, it happens more with women. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I just wonder why we tolerate it. Yeah. You know, I just can't understand how, how we can tolerate it, really, and, um, and assume that every house is a nice, comfortable, happy, yeah. you know, space, but it's not. Yeah, well, there is some denial on our part, I guess. We don't want to see it or, I don't know. Yeah, yeah it, I mean, I, you know, it's not to say that every family is like that, but you know there's quite a lot out there that shouldn't, mm -hmm. shouldn't be in existence, you know, yeah. it, should, it should be dealt with somehow, mm -hmm. you know, the, or the victim ought to be given somehow some, some way of escaping mm -hmm. the problem. Absolutely. You know. You know, and it's uh, very often, it's, it's private, it's not reported. Mm -hmm. How do you go up, how do you explain to whoever you go to, which the officialdom, which is police, to explain, <laughs> you know, your mental anguish? Yeah. You know, you just be laughed at, and so people don't. Yeah. You know, and uh, a lot of people die from it too, yeah. which is, uh, become real victims of it. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, it does appear in my work. And, um, and obviously, that, you know, nothing's in isolation. You know, domestic violence is also war. Mm -hmm. You know, war is also capitalism. Capitalism is also, you know, they're all connected somewhere along the line. And somewhere in all this mess that we've got ourselves into, you know, uh, we need to survive and, and not just survive by eating food, you know, survive by, be, by knowing what our potential is to change this, mm -hmm. you know, to make this a much better world for the next generation. We have got a next generation sitting yeah, at the back we, there. We could hear. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you might have a question for us yeah. after. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they will have the opportunity to, to take the mic too. But in that sense, uh, you know that little children sometimes when they don't have a language yet, they sometimes report abuses or violence within their drawing. Sometimes you know they're going through violence at home because they draw stuff. Oh yeah, yeah, stuff. it's very much in the drawing. Absolutely, and not only the drawing, but the colors that they choose. You know, the, a, a child that's going through a trauma does not pick yellow and orange. Yeah. They really don't, they pick very dark colors, yeah. That's amazing Interesting. because there's a message there. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, what, can you tell us a little about animal rights and what's your take on our relationship with, with animals? Uh, what yeah. do I think of our relationship with animals? Appalling. I mean... <laughs> Next one, please. Oh, there's one. Um, well, I, you know... I've, I've kind of gave up meat sort of 60 years ago, so, and fish, so mm -hmm. I, you know, I prefer to see fish swimming and I prefer, I live on a farm, I prefer to stroke the cows and, yeah. you know, I, just, you know I, I mean, that's my choice, I'm not, I'm not saying everybody else should give up meat, they, you know, you make your own choice, I don't have a problem with people eating meat mm. or fish, it's usually the other way around, yes. it used to be the people that ate meat and fish would have a, a problem with you eating only vegetables. Mm -hmm. it's, it's changed now, the whole thing has shifted yeah. because people have become more aware of food, of their health, mm -hmm. and uh, that's very important. It's incredibly, incredibly important. Mm -hmm. If you're not healthy, if you're not keeping healthy and thinking straight, then how can you blossom? Yeah. You can't, it's not possible. Mm. It's, um, yeah, well. So yes, I, I have a good relationship with animals. Mm -hmm. I think they like me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I think we only have two questions about grass because we know that's in the past and uh, a lot has been 
told about it already. But uh, we're also curious. <laughs> so we have a couple of questions about, um, about the, the time with, with CRAS and PUNK. Um, CRAS were active as a collective in the um, late 70s, beginning of the 80s. And at the same time, um, there were a lot of social movements um, that were happening at the same time. And we were wondering if you had uh, any connections with them or, or, or not, or, or if it was like a conscious uh, decision to, to uh, have relationships with them or not. Uh, well, yeah, there were a lot of movements that were, were coming to the fore again. But you have to remember that um, because Penny, Rambo and I are of a later age, um, mm -hmm. We went through the 60s, yes. you know, and uh, we were at art school in 61, you know, mm -hmm. for five years, and it was rising, rising, rising to 68, Paris 68. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we really thought we could change the world. Yeah. There is an exhibition on at the moment. Um, I can't remember what the place is called now. My friend would remember. Um, it's a really brilliant exhibition that somebody's, an Argentinian guy has put together of all the um, demonstrations were taking, taking place in different countries during the 60s, mm -hmm. the late middle to late 60s. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, and uh, it's, 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 uh, it's incredibly uh, brutal in places because uh, the photographs are from uh, government archives, some of them, so you, it's police br brutality, like yeah. in South Africa, in Sudan, you know, and um, then you've got all those police brutality in Paris, you mm -hmm. know, London, blah. But it's really worth, uh, worth going to see. Uh, it's, in, it's just, um, it's in a little gallery right opposite um, Ciudadella Park. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And it's really worth, um, yeah, going to, going to see it, read it, and mm -hmm. see the films that are showing there. Yeah. Um, but uh, so, so when we come to the 70s and 80s, we've got this uh, maybe, maybe a sense of maybe we can do it again, maybe we can yeah. get it, <laughs> doing it this time. So, um, yeah, we did have a lot of connection with a lot of the different groups that were rising. Mm -hmm. There was like um, animal rights, there was the women's lib ri uh, mm -hmm. rising again. There, we took, a, you know, all the women in the band took took part in the Greenham Common and, oh, yeah. and the, the fights there and um, stopped the city where everybody was acting mm -hmm. the clown and shutting yeah. the city down for a day. So you couldn't do that now because it's digital age. I don't know. You couldn't do it. All. See? <laughs> no, <laughs> you no. can't do anything like that. <laughs> you know, they are there before you. So, yeah, um, yeah I mean, I've, got, I've lost the thread of this question. What was it? <laughs> I think you answered the question already. It was about... Uh, uh, yeah, and what I was going to say was that, yes, it, it was going really well and uh, we'd made some, made some money, so we put it into an autonomy um, uh, mm -hmm. site mm -hmm. in London. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we, it was right by the River Thames. It was a, a place to have gigs and have meetings. And, and we said, but we're not running it. Mm -hmm. We put the money up, but we're not running it. You run it. Mm -hmm. uh, it lasted two years <laughs> because everybody, all the fractions, all the different groups thought their group was right. Yeah. This group was wrong. You know, and yeah. it just became this horrible infighting. And yeah. collapse, totally collapse. It was a very good uh, experiment yeah. in how not to do it. Yeah. You know, it was really, really sad, really. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, did you feel disappointed when that happened? Or? Yeah, I mean, we certainly weren't going to step in because that wasn't the deal. Mm -hmm. We said, we give you the money, you start the autonomy site. And mm -hmm. but there you and go. That was that. That yeah. was that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, well, the, the second question we have about CRAS is that um, you seem uh, somehow to reject ideologies somehow, and also you personally, you've sighed away from being labeled as a pacifist, uh, feminist, and whatnot. Uh, what's your take on that uh, today? The same, I don't feel like an ist of any sort. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, you know, we weren't anarchists. Mm -hmm. You know, we might have practiced anarchy, but we weren't anarchists with a, you know, 
follow the yeah. leader type thing. You yeah. know, it's kind of like, it was a label that was really put heavily on us. Mm -hmm. So we thought we'd run with it and have a bit of fun, you know. Yeah. But um, it's the same with feminists. I'm not a feminist, you know. Um, I, that's not to say I don't fight for the rights yeah. <laughs> with it. But I feel more like a humanist, you know. And I, if I'm going to fight, I'm going to fight for everybody here. Mm -hmm. But I know there's particular different projects, different problems in each fight, mm -hmm. you know. And, um, you know, if we work in with a lot of women, then the, 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 the problems are different and mm -hmm. we'll approach it differently, you know. And um, mm -hmm. the same as we did with uh, the second album. Was it the second album? Penis Envy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it was the women that really wanted to put that together as the second mm -hmm. album and say what we wanted to say, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's um, uh, I don't, I'm not fond of isms. Yeah. You know, I'm not a Marxist, socialist, anything. Yeah. I just leave me alone. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you know, but if you want help, I'll give it. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, I have a question now. Uh, I, this one is not prepared, but now that you mentioned uh, Penny Semby, I, I have uh, the image of the cover very clear in my mind. And, um, I, I remember reading somewhere that um, some of the reac reactions to that cover were like shock or uh, wow. And then uh, you said, uh, we just took uh, something that existed as it is and put it like in, an, in a new light, so to speak. Well, so that was very common with the, the um, sort of uh, the collage work. Yes. Uh, yeah, I would take very familiar objects but place them how they yes. would not usually be placed, seen together, but somehow that triggers yeah, new different thinking. Yes. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, the cover for um, Penis Envy, you said. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that was, um, I think I must have been ahead of my time because the figure, <laughs> the angel, is androgynous. Yeah. It, you know, it's kind of like, it has no <laughs> sex, right? Yeah. It's kind of like, um, no, just. I mean, I, again, it's, it was seen to illustrate what we were trying to say. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that, that's the way it came out. Yeah. And do you still play with uh, images and symbols like that? Like, I mean, uh, placing them in uh, different ways so it creates uh, a new narrative? As in, you take a pre existing thing that we usually read in a certain kind of way and then you misplace it and boom, new. I think, well, I mean, I think. I think um, placing, yeah, the placement and the colour and the sort of ambience that a picture makes is what gives, gives it mm -hmm. the chance to say something else mm -hmm. for somebody. Um, if I'm understanding your question. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and I think that's quite, I mean, that's obviously, for me, that's quite important. Because mm -hmm. it's not only for the people that look at it, it's also for me. Mm -hmm. You know, I suddenly place something next to it and I think, Whoa, that's yeah. weird. That's saying something very weird. Yeah. You know, do I want that or don't I want it? You know, I, yeah. do I leave it or don't I? Say yeah. anything. But yeah, I mean, um, yeah, I mean, one could say it, it's a trick. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I suppose I started painting very finely because a lot of the subject matter people didn't really want to look closely at. Mm -hmm. But because they couldn't figure out how it was done, they would get drawn in, <laughs> looking closer, and then suddenly realise it was <laughs> like a hand hanging off something, you yeah. know, or something. Yeah, yeah. You know, it was a rotten trick, but I mean, it, it did the trick. So, yeah. you know, it worked. It, so yeah. yeah, it started the questions, so yeah, which is good. Yeah, yeah, opens the conversation. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, Blanca, do you? Have yeah, just out of the record, because this is not prepared either, um, I was thinking, like, do you think, because your, your, the messages in your art are kind of universal, religion, capitalism, co consumerism? Um, uh, well, yeah, I think they're universal until you, you kind of hit, you know, the indigenous populations that have, are still in kind of isolation, mm -hmm. um, you know, and you, you kind of hope they survive in the way they want in that isolation. I think there is a turning with that, but yeah, I suppose, I suppose 
every country has been tainted with greed and capitalism, yeah. Because like people today, even the youth can identify with those images you were throwing at people at that time. And I am thinking that that's maybe because things haven't changed that much. Haven't changed at all. <laughs> <laughs> it got worse. <laughs> but, you know, the, worse, the more and more it gets worse is when it tips over the edge mm -hmm. and people will get out in the street. I mean, that happened in Britain with Thatcher. Mm. She tried to bring, you know, a tax, a draconian tax back mm -hmm. into the country, which was like 200 years old. Mm. You know, it's kind of like, and it was, you know, it, every head of the house, uh, every head in the house would be taxed, even to the, you know. Yeah. It was just her last ditch stand, and mm -hmm. it was the tipping point for mm -hmm. everybody getting on the street and setting fire to everything they could find, quite honestly. Mm -hmm. And it was, that's what got rid of her. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's kind of, I like to think it's, I don't want it to get worse, but it's going to have to get worse to get people off their fucking asses and out there mm -hmm. and realizing they have a voice, mm -hmm. they have a say. Fr France is really good at it. Yes. The French always <laughs> are really, really organized and they don't mess around. Yeah. Even though the police in Paris especially are brutal. They're yeah. brutal, yeah. you know, and, um, and in Colombia, my friends from Colombia, you know, the demonstrations there, you should go and see that exhibition again because there's a picture of the police, mm -hmm. Colombian police, and they look like something out of Star Trek. You know, this <laughs> huge black armor on. Yeah. It's horrendous. It's unbelievable. You know, shielded, everything is shielded. Everything is black. You cannot see the person behind either. Yeah. They're just wielding the rods, you know. Yeah. It's kind of like, you know, and I, I think, you know, what's happened in Britain especially, I know Britain mostly, obviously, because mm -hmm. I come from there, but people have been tricked and bought the lie. You know, mm. they've, they've got their mortgage. They can't defect on that, because if they defect, they lose their home. Mm -hmm. If they lose their home, they lose the family. So Thatcher against, it's Thatcherism all the time in our country at the moment. I mean, it just never stops. Mm -hmm. She's put things in place that you can't escape. Mm -hmm. You're frightened, you can't, you can't mm -hmm. do it. You know, so you're trapped in this whole financial system, this, yeah. this ownership system, you know, this, this buy, buy, buy system, mm -hmm. these new shopping malls that nobody mm -hmm. has got the money to spend in, and yet, yeah. and, and what they do spend, they don't have. Mm -hmm. People live on this credit, you know, mm -hmm. 20,000 pounds, some of people. It's like, I think, how can you live <laughs> in debt? I don't even like owing five P's as <laughs> one, you know. It's kind of like <laughs> and it's a different way of thinking. Someone said, well, everybody does it. The banks yeah. allow you to spend, spend. And yeah. then you have to give it back. And I think, well, you're just trapped. It's trapped yeah. all the time, all the time. Is yeah. it worth it? Not really. <laughs> no, it isn't worth it, no. No. Not in the long run, no. no. Not if we want to change stuff, it's not worth it. Yeah. But I'm guessing it's easy to fall into such a trap. because it's, like it's easy. They make, they make it very it's, easy. Yeah. But when you have a car accident, how hard is it to get money out of the insurance company? Oh. How hard is it to get them your money back? Yeah. You know, make it easy for you to take, mm -hmm. they, you know. Yeah. It's kind of crazy. It's, it's all back to front. Yeah. And uh, do you think, like, in, uh, you were uh, talking about uh, the tipping point where people say enough. Could you, like, fathom or imagine a situation in England, for example, for that to happen? Like, if this happens, then... Well, it's very strange because I was looking at the French um, protests against the um, retirement mm -hmm. age and... Uh, wanting to put it from 62 to 63, mm -hmm. or 65, I can't remember now. And I was thinking, wow, look at them out on the street. In England, they're putting it from 65 to 67, and nobody's made a peep about it. Nothing. I think, like, wow, why would, you know, no. why would you not protest against this? Yeah. So you're having to work till 67 now. Yeah. You know, so if you're nearly 70, do you get more than two weeks holiday a week? It's kind of <laughs> like, oh, my goodness me, you know. Yeah. You know, I don't blame the French really fighting at this, because it's not right. 
Mm -hmm. They've paid all their money in, they should be getting their pension mm -hmm. when they retire at mm -hmm. that age and, and living a life yeah. you know, that's much more agreeable to them. But yes. there you go. Now, England, it will need a lot to tip it. A lot more, yeah. Yeah, I don't know what it would be here, but... It's the same, really. We are asking the same questions. Like, here, we have a problem with pensions also, and no one's in the street, like, a minority is on the streets. But then, some years ago, there was this tax rising in Chile, and everything exploded. So, we ask the same question. Why, why isn't it all burning here, or like? Well, I think everybody's, as I say, I think everybody's been led down the path and bought the lie and they've got stuck now. It's hard mm -hmm. to get out of. Yeah. You know, and the banks have made it so easy. And I don't know. I don't know what the answer is, really. I mean, you have to, uh, we're back to square one. You have to look to yourself. Yeah. Is it worth it? Mm -hmm. Is there another way? Yeah. yeah. And do you think, uh, I mean, uh, we were talking about creativity and art before, uh, do you think um, it could, uh, art or culture in general, could trigger that to happen, like people going click and, and kind of, or, it, or has, it has it limitations? Uh, obviously it does, but... Uh, I don't know, it's different things that trigger people at different times. I mean, you know, in the 60s it was poetry, it was the mm -hmm. word, it was, you know, it was the word that was triggering mm -hmm. people, you know, stand up, you know, mm -hmm. jazz with mm -hmm. all that stuff. You know, and then, then it changed and, and like reading was the thing and then music was the thing, yeah. you know, that triggers everybody, you know, and, um, you know, it, it take, I don't know what's going to take mm -hmm. to trigger it again, you know, it's kind of, you know, like somebody like Banksy comes along and puts, you know, you could say political art on the wall, mm -hmm. but it's too humorous. Mm. It's too too comfortable. It's too easy. Yeah. You know, it's the only way I've seen it. Well, I've been in Palestine, and, and the stuff he did there is powerful, mm -hmm. but it makes no sense in a way back here. Mm. And now it's got softer and softer. You know, it's mm -hmm. kind of. I mean, I like it, but it's too easy. Yeah. It, it's far too easy. Mm -hmm. And everybody feels. The emotion of it, the little girl with the balloon or the, the, the yeah. guy with the flowers to the police, we all know that and we will probably agree with it, but it's not enough, is it? It's not, no, it's not. <laughs> kind of... <laughs> yeah, well, I don't know either, <laughs> so... <laughs> but it's good to think about it, though. It's so. popular start, really, it's, you know... Yeah, maybe, yeah. 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 So, um, G, if regarding recommendations we really like what you do and what you speak about. If you could uh, tell us about something that you think we should go and see, something artistic or a film or a director or read a book. No, I couldn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I, you won't give us a I mean, I, I have just mentioned that exhibition because I yes. saw it yesterday and it was suggested by a friend who'd bought me the book. But I can't remember where it's at. My friend's at the back somewhere. If we ask him, he'll know is exactly there? where it is. <laughs> where is he? ¿Qué? ¿Cómo? Photo Colectania. Okay. Yeah. So, opposite. there it is. That's it. <laughs> That's the place. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. <laughs> um, I think this is all on our part, and we will. Um, open the, just, yeah. the time for the questions. We just wanted to, to ask you what are you doing now, if you wanted to share, or which are your next steps, which are your plans, what are you doing at the moment, what, if there's something <laughs> that you want to share. Um, what are my plans? Uh, my plans are on hold at the moment for personal reasons. Um, mm. And um, I have if anybody's in Madrid, I'm part of a show there in June. I think it's on till August. And it's, it's an institution, it's oh. Reina Sofia. <laughs> 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 but um, they've been bending backwards to allow me to do what I want to do. So mm -hmm. it's kind of been very good in that respect. So yeah, I've got um, 
uh, made a new film. There's two films, a, a book that I'd made, and four paintings mm -hmm. in the exhibition. Yeah. So yeah, if you're in Madrid around that time, well, you are. <laughs> I am. Yeah, yeah well, Reina Sofia have been. Have a look. It, it's a huge institution. It might be an interesting exhibition actually. It's based mm -hmm. on mechan. It's called Machinations, mm -hmm. and it's based on the writing of. Mm, forgotten. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> We have the internet, we can check everything. <laughs> <laughs> but it could, yeah, I mean, it, it should be a, a very interesting exhibition, I hope so. Mm. Okay, so... And if you're in London, okay. there is uh, an exhibition starting in November called Women in Revolt. Oh. And that should be pretty good. I've got a couple of pieces in that. And it's at the Tate Britain. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't really like the way they're they've kind of sectioned it, the exhibition. Mm -hmm. I, don't like, I don't like sectioning things up because everything's connected. But anyway, no. uh, we agree to disagree with the curator. <laughs> yeah. So um, it still should be really, really interesting, okay. I think, yeah. yeah. It's a lot of work from uh, movements, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. feminist movement mm -hmm. fighting for abortion rights or fighting for home care rights or fighting you know, mm -hmm. this, that and the other. So. I'm in the domestic violence section. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But yeah, Perfect. It, um, it, it should be interesting. It starts okay. in November, yeah. So, you know, Madrid, London. Yeah, <laughs> you never know. <laughs> and so, um, let's start with the questions. You can answer, uh, you can ask in English and also in Spanish because we can translate. Got a microphone? Uh, uh, we don't Not have here. it. You could take one of these. We lost the microphone, sorry. <laughs> well, unless you've got a loud voice. Anybody want to shout? Yeah. It's good for the lungs. Ah, there it is. Oh, there it is. Don't be shy, come on. Mira, <laughs> allí. Hi. Um, so I have a question regarding uh, a more technical aspect of your work. Um, because when I first uh, uh, was exposed to your uh, art, I was fascinated by the collage look of some of your early paintings. And as you said before, I didn't know how they were made. So now that I can, that I can actually ask you, uh, I'd like to know if you used photos or if you created collage before painting uh, to use as references, or if you just um, draw the, the images and, and you got this uh, collage uh, look just by uh, your influences. Right. Um, the first stuff I did for Christ were all paintings, like Feeding of the 5,000 and I can't remember now, Nagasaki Nightmare and blah, blah, blah. blah. Um, and uh, yeah, I would make up a collage or my own photos, slipping in my own photos and yeah, take a kind of work from that. Um, and some are painting with a little bit of collage, because I get so bored with <laughs> doing it. Uh, I wasn't really bored, it's just... In Nagasaki Nightmare, I actually did it on purpose. I put the real people as photographs and I put the painting as the, the shit heaps, you know, behind. It kind of, um, yeah, I mean, it's just symbolic for me. It doesn't really mean a lot to other people. Um, but yeah, I mean, I didn't, uh, I didn't intend to paint so finely, but, um, but I found myself doing it that way, so I had to go with it, really. Yeah, and then some of the work is um, all collage. Stations is 
or collage. Is it? No, not station. Oh, I can't remember now. Um, yeah, it's mixtures, yeah. And the collage, you know, I, I, went, I was living in New York for a couple of years working before Crest, and um, I'd never done collage. And uh, but I had done fine painting. And of course, I, I suddenly got lots of commissions. And there was no way the commissions, like the deadline was tomorrow at 10 type thing. So I had to employ collage, and I felt I was cheating. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, oh dear, I'll have to cheat. <laughs> but I got so into it, I love it now, I love it. You know, I, I really enjoy collaging in all different ways and mixing it with different stuff, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not really cheating. <laughs> More questions? Who's call? got the microphone? Come on now. Podéis decirlo en castellano y traducimos. No hace falta que sea en inglés. Sí. Who's got it then? Who's got the microphone? Oh, down there. Um, I had a question about regarding like working with a collective or on your own, because I'm on my final year of fine arts here in Barcelona, and the university has never encouraged us to work with a collective. Oh. And what really pisses me off, like, it's everything has to be like individualistic, you know. And since you work so many years in a collective. Just, just I cross. didn't quite understand uh, the question. Sorry. Oh. Did you I, hear I, that? I'm having trouble too. Yeah. yeah. Um, I didn't quite understand the uh, question. Uh, sorry. Uh, I think it had to. Vale, it had pues, to move. Mi pregunta es que en la Universidad de Barcelona, en Bellas Artes, solo nos nos animan a trabajar de manera individual y no en colectivo. Mm -hmm. Y bueno, es algo que me molesta mucho y a mí me gustaría saber qué qué opinas. Si es mejor para un artista joven, o sea, trabajar en colectivo con demás mm -hmm. gente y tal o si de verdad en el trabajo individual pues hay lo suficiente como para crecer como tal. Okay. Um he's studying in the university uh, fine arts in university and uh, he feels that they encourage them to work on an individual level and not as a group or as a collective and that bothers him a lot. Uh, so the question is um what do you think about that and um is it important to work uh, as a collective or...? Uh... I think, you know, if the project you're working on is open to other people, then work with other people. Sort the teachers, it's got nothing to do with them. You know, you do it your way. If you don't feel it's right, then you change it. If you want to work alone, you work alone. If you don't want to work alone, you work with other people. It's as simple as that. There's no uh, if, uh, you know, buts. You go with what your heart is telling you. It's important, it's really important you do that. Yes? Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, no. <laughs> you know, and it's like, you know, when I was at art school, it's like, you know, he's kind of like, they're trying to tell you to do it. I could, couldn't bear to be told what to do. I still can't, actually. And um, they would leave me alone because I felt that it, doing it my, the way I wanted to do it and, I, and failing, I understood the mistake. You, you know, you understand more by doing it wrong, in your terms, than doing it right. You know, you know, you know when it's, it's, you've got what's inside out and it's saying it. But, you know, when you, when you make the mistakes, you learn a hell of a lot, you know, of how to maneuver around and get deeper inside to bring the, what you're trying to say onto the piece of paper or canvas or sculpture or whatever it is, piece of music. You know, so... There's no one way of doing this, and they shouldn't be telling you you work alone. It's kind of like got nothing to do with them. It's kind of a, a creative course you're on. So be creative. Yeah. <laughs> Turn the sod off. <laughs> I think that that's the bottom line today. Re recreative would be like the bottom line today. Like be creative, and that's it, right? <laughs> like the, the message. Um, más preguntas, alguien? Mira. No os cortéis, que parece intimidante porque estamos arriba y tal, pero no es verdad. <laughs> eh, uh, wow. Eh, it's not exactly a question because I don't know how to put it in words. But um, maybe just to 
I'll tell you something that to talk about. Because you said, uh, talking about all that happened in the 70s and the 80s and all punk and all that, anarchism and all, and all of that movements, you said, no, it didn't change anything. But I think it's also interesting because look at you, you're talking here, and look at all these people that have come here and that dress in some way and that think in some way and that reads all of that that, had, that was done during that years and all the music that was made and that we still listen to it. Uh, many young people and books and ideas, aesthetics also. And I was just wondering uh, your opinion about, about history, that. About history. And the history of, of, of things that have gone before you, you mean? Yeah, and I hope, uh, look at that photo, you know? Uh, th there was an aesthetic that in that time was new, but for us is not new. And you were uh, belonging to uh, the people that, all, when it was new, for us is not the same. And I was wondering uh, your relation with, with that. Well, I think, um, you know, but just because you've seen this and you think you know it, it's not always the case. You know, I can go back to a, an old master again, if I go back to a, a painting that I know very well and I get a great sense of joy from it, uh, suddenly something else happens. I've seen something else, something deeper has come through. I mean, you're not gonna get it all in one, ever. You know, it's kind of, you go, you go to where you might find inspiration or peace you know, I, there's poets that I go to, there's, a, you know, words that I go to, there's music that I go to, where I need this, I need to hear this, because I need to hear it, <laughs> you know, and it's kind of, I think it, I think it's a mistake to think you know anything. I don't know anything, really. You know, I know how my heart works and how my energy works, but I don't know fuck all. You know, I, I really don't, you know, and I go and see an old painting or I read a, a poem again and I suddenly understand a little bit more, every time a little bit more, you know, and, and uh, I don't know if you're referring to this, I mean, it's not that deep anyway, but there are a lot of things happening in it, but they are very English, some of the things that are happening in that, um, so you may not get a lot of the... Uh, Jokes <laughs> like the corgi, uh, the queen's the dog, queen. you know, and all of that. Anyway, so it's kind of like to answer your question. I think, um, yeah, I just think it's a mistake to think you know something, you know, because there's always more. There's always something there, you know, that you haven't grasped somehow, and it can be, you know, really. Um, uh, I don't know what's the word, I mean, humbling really. You just suddenly you think, oh God, I've looked at that for the last 30 years and I've never got that feeling from this. You know, and suddenly I see it. And was it what the artist was trying to show you? I have no idea. I've just happened to have picked up something greater, bigger, deeper. You know, and I think that's the same with everything, quite honestly. You know, it's kind of... Otherwise, it's so boring, isn't it? You think you know it all. I'm not saying you, personally. I'm just saying <laughs> one, one goes around looking, but not seeing. You know, there's a great difference between looking and seeing. You know, a big difference. Everybody looks, because they want to know where they're going to get to. They're looking up there. They haven't seen all this stuff on the way. You know, they haven't seen any of that. If you say to them, what did you just pass? They wouldn't, say, they, they wouldn't be able to tell you because they're not looking, they're looking beyond or they're looking at the floor. You know, it's kind of like, how do you see? I get really tired in cities because I'm like, I'm looking here, there, everywhere, you know, and I get really tired because I'm scrutinizing, you know, I'm trying to see what's happening here. You know, and uh, well, I like cities because of that really gives me um, a lot of new information, yeah. 
Does that answer the question? I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> Like, eh, ay, joder, no sé cómo decirlo, voy a decirlo en español. Venga. Pero, bueno, lo voy a intentar, porque es una pregunta rara, pero... Joder, todos aquí seguimos llevando camisetas de los cracks, ¿sabes? Y, de, y seguimos viendo cuadros y seguimos haciendo colases. Y, y me parecía interesante cómo desde una persona de... Bueno, no sé cuántos años tienes, pero sé que eres bastante más mayor que yo. Y que... Muchos de los que ahora, pues, joder, vemos fotos así, vemos chupas de cuero y sabemos que no somos los primeros en llevar una chupa de cuero, sabemos que no somos los primeros en hacer un collage y en decir ciertas cuestiones, ciertas reflexiones. No sé si se, se entiende a lo que me refiero, ¿sabes? Y me parecía curioso o interesante la relación con, con esa identidad desde alguien que, que está en el, en el otro punto, ¿sabes? No sé si se vale. puede traducir. Sí se puede, sí, pues todo se puede. Okay. Te refieres un poco al tema legado, ¿no? Como... Claro, en plan, de, de que aquí todos vivimos mucho de... Bueno, no vivimos, de, evidentemente no, y todos tenemos nuestra vida, y como ya he dicho, es cuestión de mirar, uh -huh. pero se puede mirar de las dos maneras, en plan, existen esas dos realidades, en plan, la cuestión de que el legado es falso, pero también hay un legado verdadero y, uh -huh. y tangible, y me parecía interesante uh -huh. pues, la relación de cómo veían, uh -huh. a, o cómo puede ver ella, o cómo se relaciona con... Uh -huh con ese legado y, y, y con ser parte de lo que ha sido legado. Vale, se lo pasamos a ver qué... Eh, yo, tú... Lo que quieras. Me da igual. Uh, he's, he's talking about um, how some, so many people nowadays still um, uh, still uh, do collage were this kind of um, identity that you were pioneers in putting through. And you belong to that generation that, that were creating all that on the first place, and some other people just received that legacy, and he, he thinks it's interesting. Oh, yeah, it is. Yeah, it is really interesting, you know, that it's inspired you to take another step forward you know, another route. You know, you're not doing it exactly the same as me. There would be no point. But you've gone, you know, you've taken the platform and you've leapt off in the direction that you want to take it, which is fantastic. Mm. You know, I think that's what it's all about, really. You know, it doesn't have to be images. It can be words, it can be anything, really. And it inspires people to take it on another route. It's always growing, it's always growing, it's, it's never stopped. Mm -hmm. You know, you can go right the way back in history, it's never stopped. Mm -hmm. That, you know, that inspiration to mm -hmm. take it on another, another journey. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great. I think uh, the, the question also included uh, the thing about uh, how do you feel about that specific uh, legacy, like uh, the punk thing or... Because there's this, th this thing that um, we've, we know it's in the past, sort of, but we're still doing things. So uh, there's like um, um, this, not a difference, but um, contradiction, maybe. Because we know we are not the, the first ones wearing like a... The, I the wasn't the jacket. first. I wasn't <laughs> the first one. You know, you may have taken the inspiration from some of my work, but I wasn't first. There's peop hundreds of people before me. You know, that's how it grows all the time, and you're now part of that legacy. You're taking it the next step. You'll inspire someone else. That's how it is. You know, I wasn't the first. You just happened to have you got something from my work, and now you're t running with it. But, you know, that's... That's part of the history. It will continue. There'll be people after you, after you, the next one, the next one, the next one. If we survive that long, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully. Ya, más o menos. Tenemos tiempo, eh? Any more questions? It's one over hey. here. Thank you. Lady in the white. Um, hi, uh, well, first of all, thank for letting to this world like really good 
work that have you done in here. And well, second, um, it's kind of like, well, my question is basically, um, I'm coming from America Latina, I'm just like from that part of the world, and since I arrived to live here, like to this part of the world, I've just seen like very uh, pointy like differences between how like people like us, like youth, whatever, e even like elder people too, see like the political things that are going on, like in the world, for example. I mean that we in America Latina, we see what is happening also in this part of the world, you know, like is not also what is in our continent or something. But the question here is also regardless that, that I've seen that here in Europe, at least for what I've like lived so far, uh, I don't see too much like movement regardless like what are happening in other parts of the world, not only what is like in Europe or even close to Asia or whatever. But well, my question is if, you, because you were saying that you were living in New York for I don't know how many time, uh, but you had the, you actually travel more like in that part and you were like able to see differences and regardless also what you were saying that you don't f see or feel yourself like a feminist or isms in general, like the question is if there's been something for you that has stopped your own like kind of like way to interpret like some things that you experienced back in those days that you were living in that part of the world. So there has been something for you that has been like a stop for you to say like, oh, maybe I shouldn't be talking about this because I'm asking this because I already asked this to other artists that I... I understand. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, the question is that if you've been like, um, if you experience something for you that hasn't been like in your mind, like, oh, I shouldn't be talking about this because this doesn't concern me, like, because maybe I'm not part of, of this other part of the world, like mentally, political, mm -hmm. something, has something stopped you from creating any artwork, like in these terms? I don't know if you understand my question, sorry. I'm a little bit lost because you're not very clear um, and I only caught half I think, of that. I think I got it. Correct me if, if I'm wrong, okay? I think uh, she means, uh, well, the world is big and there's many places and uh, she's from um, South America, Latin America. And um, she wanted to know if you ever did anything and then go, oh, maybe I don't know much about this context. I shouldn't go yeah, into exactly. that. Or how careful are you when approaching? Uh, oh, I'm topics? kind of really careful. Um, not a lot of my work is about other countries because I don't know them, quite honestly. I do know that domestic violence is worldwide. Um, I do know certain things like war and crime and drugs and drinking is worldwide, but I don't know the politics, you know, I don't know the politics of the country, how that affects the individual on a daily basis. So I don't really go there. The only two countries I've, I've ever gone deeply into is Northern Ireland mm -hmm. and Palestine, um, which, you know, they're, they're very, what do you say, similar? but they, they're very bound together, the two countries. They always have been, you know, with their, um, the radical people that are fighting for independence. There's a very uh, strong link between, mm -hmm. the, well, the, RR, the IRA in the time and the, the Palestinian um, Liberation Front. So, um, but yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go anywhere near a lot of countries because I, I just don't know the politics you know, in that sense. So, so a lot of my work is, is universal in, the, in terms of its subject matter. There's a few that I've really just gone full out for like an anti-war thing like, oh, there was one, can we change the image? It's a bit boring, this one. Uh, um, Guillem, podrías? Uh, like the still life, oh, that's domestic violence. 
Eh, no, son las anteriores. Creo que es la tercera. No, la cuarta puede ser. La, esto. So, yeah, I mean, that one's just, you know, an obvious war picture. Um, and I don't know, it's a, still life with nude is, is a term that's used in English art schools. Mm. Uh, a still life with nude is like a, a vase of flowers with a, a cup of tea next to it. That's a still life. Un bodegón. I mean, it's a, it's a very English term. And I thought still life is... Um, was a strange term for that sort of thing, so I added it to something that was really still. We'll move mm -hmm. again. Mm -hmm. um, and like something like your country needs you. You know, it's, um, again, it's an old piece of wording from the First World War, but everybody gets the point. Because I think everybody is aware of the First World War's finger pointing at a recruitment photo. Actually, that's what it was that you need to join the army and get killed. So, that sort of thing. But, you know, but to answer your question, no, I haven't done anything about South America um, in uh, party politic term, no. no. I keep an eye on it, but there's nothing I can say about it. So, this one up. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Ah, one here. Hola y gracias. Tengo varias preguntas. Eh, contesta las que quieras. Eh, eh, hay, eh, no sé si me voy a equivocar en la, en la apreciación. Eh, hay autores, autoras, artistas que, eh, cuyo, cuyo arte eh, sirve pues, para la exhibición, para la contemplación, para, para la venta, para la compra. Eh, Puede que, puede que el tuyo también, pero, pero hay artistas que se queda, que se queda ahí. Eh, sin embargo, si, si no me equivoco, muchas de tus imágenes eh, se han reproducido eh, y se han pirateado eh, dentro de, de una subcultura, incluso también fuera de ella. ¿Cómo, ¿Cómo ves eso? ¿Cómo ves la reproducción sistemática década tras década de tu, de tu arte? En muchos casos, una mala reproducción, eh, el pirateo de, de tus imágenes. Cuando estabas a finales de los 70, principios de los 80, creando todas esas imágenes que tenían un, una finalidad política dentro del movimiento punk, que escuchabas esa música que editaba Crash Records y sellos paralelos, las bandas anarquistas británicas, escuchabas bandas también un poco posteriores como Discharge o Exploited y qué piensas de eso y, y qué piensas también de la reunión de Crash hace unos años Gracias vale. uh, There's three questions in that yeah. <laughs> So um... Do you have notes for the first one? Maybe yeah. you can do that. Um, he was asking, first of all, there are many artists that kind of stay in the marketplace. They exhibit their art. They're into <coughs> buying and shopping art. And maybe you are too, but no. he says, <laughs> <laughs> but he says um, what do you think about your creations being repu re reproduced? One once and again, and losing maybe their quality sometimes, and used for... There's nothing you can do about it, really. Mm. I mean, there's, it's reproduced so badly, so many places all over the world that, you know, I could be, do it, I could be chasing it all my life, and I've, I've got a better life than that, so they get on with it and they make the money, so there's nothing we can do about it. So, to answer that one. Okay. So I feel okay. At first I got very annoyed, mm. especially if they changed the image and added things to it. Oh. But, uh, you know, most people just do it straight and so it's fine, even if it's badly done, it's okay. Os, os hacen la traducción, ¿verdad? Vale. Second was... So uh, about Crass, about the time with uh, Crass, and did you listen to the music you were making, obviously, and uh, what you put out in Crass Records? Did you like it, or uh, listen to other bands from the same period, or not? Um, yeah, I, th I think what we did was great. Um, 
I couldn't not hear it because my studio was next door to the rehearsal room. <laughs> so um, once we really got into it, I had to move studio because the brush would be going like this <laughs> as they rehearsed. So uh, I had to go to the end of the garden and work there. Um, yeah, but I really loved what we did. You know, I thought it was fantastic. I don't like all of it, but there's, you know, I think it, it did its job very well. Yeah. And we did the, our job very well as a group of people. You know, mm -hmm. we, all, we all channeled, um, you know, our energies and our insight towards what we did. And uh, the rule was if you felt really strongly about a song or a line or something or an, um, an image, uh, you said so and it was dropped. But uh, I was given free range, really. All I needed to know was, give me the songs as you write them so I can get an idea of what this album is about. So that was my, that was my way of working. And then I'd screw away down the garden and work. <laughs> so that, yeah. He asked uh, whether you, liked, you also liked some other bands that came later, like Exploded or Discharge. No, no. <laughs> no uh, I'm not really fond of punk music. <laughs> um, I mean, I liked, I liked the energy of some, uh, but I'm not, it's not something I put on to listen to and relax to, no. No, <laughs> definitely not. <laughs> but I'm really happy that it's still going. I mean, we, we still get asked to play at Rebellion, you know, as... Um, as different, different, not crass, but you know, Steve Ignorant has, goes around with his thing. And the last time we were up there, we were given the Opera House, which was great. So we did an opera, and it was yeah. really good. It's and the punk enough. sat there really, really <laughs> still. <and listened. laughs> we thought it was going to say, Oh, it's a living. <laughs> no, they just, they were really respectful. They really, really sat quietly and listened and watched the whole, and made another film, watched the whole thing, and mm -hmm. it was really good, yeah. It was nice, it was a beautiful yeah. opera house in gold and red. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. So Rebellion is, is good. If you've never been to Rebellion, you should go. It's really good. It's run by very good people, really good people. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Creo que había pregunta. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he said he's never been to, but he, he doesn't have an interest in going there. <laughs> and the last one was, what do you think about Crass Reunion some years ago? Crass what? Re reunion, when, he, when they met some years ago. Uh, well, it wasn't Crass. The one at the Queen Elizabeth Hall, that was just separate people in the band performing with lots of other bands and uh, English choir and we had all sorts. We had reggae, we had everything. It was a big concert against the Iraqi war. We were asked mm -hmm. to give, so it was very good. Uh, could have been better, but um, <laughs> yeah, it was okay. Ay, ay, ay. First off, thank you very much for, for coming across and thank you to all the organizers and people involved Who is putting he? this on. Who's oh, yeah. saying that? Oh, there you are. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, and, and thank you as well for the things you've said. It's been inspiring and also reassuring as well. Um, what I wanted to ask, though, with the explosion of the artificial intelligence, uh, has you, you been affected directly? as work uh, being published that's been claimed to be yours, and what do you think's going to, to happen with this whole artificial intelligence, copying art? Oh, I don't know. I mean, I've no idea, really. I mean, I don't really think about it a lot in that sense because I've got too much to do, you know, and I want to get on with that, you know, I can't. I mean, it's affected us in the sense, as I said earlier, that we have to produce things differently for the printer. We have to produce things differently. We still, we still um, 
would cut the records and master them at Abbey Road, but Abbey Road have got the latest, latest stuff. You can do ridiculous things with it now. You know, Penny's always up there, you know, working away. So the digital age has come to music as well. Um, we're putting out um, an old uh, recording, not Chris, um, but we, we need to slow it down which you can do, but you know that if you slow things down, the tone goes down with it. But you can slow it down and then you can retune it. <laughs> now, it's as easy as that. It's quite extraordinary. You know, there's so many tools, you know, that, that are exactly like sort of Photoshop, you know, in the music business. Um, so yeah, it's affected in good ways. It's affected in, I don't really, I don't do collage on Photoshop. Um, I, can, I can build up a cover, I do a lot of uh, CD covers, LP covers still for people and um, you know I can set it all out in InDesign, I've had to learn all that because as I say that you have to present it to the printer in a different way so, so yeah, um, but otherwise no I don't really think about it, I mean I know that a lot of my work's up there and floating around, I don't know how they've got a hold of it, they, I, I have to let it go. You know. Can I just follow up? I mean, now I could type into a program and say, I want uh, a piece of art with your style and it's great. Yeah, probably, yes. yes. Probably. Yes. I have no idea. Yes. But it won't have any soul. No. No. I'm, I'm involved with it. That's why it's interesting to actually show the originals because they're paintings and because the, and the collage is all done by hand, touched. You know, it, it, it has a presence. It definitely has a presence, you know, from just a print. And, um, yeah, well, that's important. Yeah, but yeah, I'm sure they could do all sorts of things. Yeah, and I, I believe artists, a lot of artists are concerned because... Oh, I can't concern myself with that. <laughs> you know, I really, I've got my garden to keep and I've got work to do. And I really just have to get on. You know? vale. Mm. Anyone? Oh, there's one there. Look. Yeah. Um, Be patient. Yeah, hi, Alan. I also wanted to thank you for coming and for sharing your thoughts. I found them very interesting. And I'm also going to try to ask you something in my crappy English. Sorry. Um, well, I, I, I actually wanted to confront something you said about the tipping point, about how people can start revolting, and uh, it's some kind of uh, worst is better for arriving to this point, and I, I think the opposite, actually. I think we may be worst now and getting worst, uh, all the time and things are not changing and we are not arriving to this point. Uh, I think that um, what is happening is that um, we are getting more used to it and state capitalism the system doesn't need uh, so much violence than they used uh, before and where I want to go is I think um, your art, your music, your messages had some value at that time to give some uh, energy or some uh, power to people to revolt and I think we need to uh, keep going on this way. Um, so that's my thought, and I wanted to know what's, uh, what's your thoughts well, about I it. Well, I think if you're saying that, um, you, that it's, it's harder, it's got worse, you know, and, the, you know, it's tightening up on everybody. You know, every, every country in Europe is tightening up on the individual. They know exactly what's going on, what your preference is, whether you like pink or blue, you know, it's all that crap. It's kind of like the tools for getting you away from the lie are still the same. The tools are nature herself, you know, of isolation, sitting alone, just sitting quietly, stop, just sit, just sit quietly, 
and just let things, you know, run through your head, through your body. You know, I think those tools are yours, that you were born with a, a facility, you know, that it's all out there. You don't have to sign up to some class, you know, of yoga or what have you. If, it, if it's what you want to do, that's fine, but you can do it without anything. It's out there. You just go and look for it, seek it, you know, and sit with it and see what comes. You know, people are rushing around all the time. In England, it, it never stops, never stops. And you just say, stop, sit, just reflect. You know, what has happened in your day? What's happened in the last hour? Can you remember? You know, can you tell me the sense of it? You know, it's kind of like, you speak to yourself, just talk to yourself, oh my God, you know. What's my diet like? Is it driving me mad because I'm eating bags of sweets, you know, and chocolate? And, or is it, you know, have I eaten any greens this week? It's as simple as that. It's so domestic. It's kind of like, just check how you're running your life. You know, I've had a, one bottle of wine too much. I mean, I drink wine when I come here because I like to drink wine here. <laughs> but really, I maybe have two glasses of wine a month when I'm home. But it's a treat when I come here because you know, my friend gets me a bottle of wine and I, I drink it. <laughs> you know, it's like, but you know, if I was to do that every day at home, I'd probably be getting a little bit ill. Mm -hmm. You know, and of course, you know, as you get older, you, you have to listen to your body. You know, it's changing. You know, I'm not, you know, I'm kind of like nearing 80. You know, I've got to pace myself differently. I'm going to do what I'm going to do, but I, I can't do it with the same force, fast force. I can do it with the same force, but I can do it so fast. I have to tread my way through, you know, because I'm going to get this done. And it's kind of like you listen, you know, you think, well, I've forgotten to eat certain things that I need to eat because brains are not going to function here. You know, it's kind of simple. It's very simple. But people don't stop. They don't stop and think, you know, how's my body doing? Does it need something? Tell me, tell me, what do you need? Or what you don't you need? You know, it's kind of like people have lost contact with their bodies in Britain. I don't know about Spain. Because you still, the meal is together, is still very important. You still have extended family. You still have a lot of things that don't exist in Britain anymore. You still let the children go out and play. We don't do that in Britain anymore. They're locked in. They're on a lead. It's appalling what's happened. You know, but, you know, you've still got some of those community... You have the fiestas. Any chance you're having a fiesta? England, you've got a right to the government and ask if you can have a fiesta. You know, you can do this, you can do that. And it's kind of like, don't lose it. Don't lose. You've lost a lot already. Don't lose the rest. You know, it's kind of really important how the community comes together here. It's lovely to watch children running down, you know, and not being told, don't do this, don't do that, don't do this. You know, it's, it's, it's really chronic in Britain on that, on that level. It's sad, it's really sad. Even I get l looked at if I go to talk to a child, the mother is immediately snatches the child away. Like, what? That is crazy. You know, but it's, um, I like coming here because there's a certain amount of freedom, whether you like it or not, there's a certain amount of coming together, which is really, really joyous, you know. And, um, so much of that has gone from Britain, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have time for three more questions. Three more, how do yeah. you know that? They might be an hour long. <laughs> I've been told. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, um, I wanted to ask you about um, when you do art from the margins and you try to follow a DIY logic in the all uh, art making process and everything, I think that uh, sometimes as an artist you can get stifled and feel like uh, your the means that the DIY ethics uh, bring you are not enough for you creatively, and the option is to feel a bit unsatisfied or uh, 
not eating, <laughs> and the other uh, is like kind of selling out, uh, what can be seen as selling out. Um, and I wanted uh, to ask you about um, how does one navigate this duality uh, when doing uh, art as a career for all life? How do you navigate what? I don't understand. For how do you navigate what? I saw a um, when you create art from the margins uh, in a DIY mm -hmm. logic and everything, mm -hmm. I think that um, the resources that uh, the, these ethic, ethics bring you are uh, limited because uh, they are not uh, tied to big corporations that let you live off art, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that sometimes uh, you can f feel uh, stifled. You can feel like uh, you are doing the same or uh, that you can do anything else because uh, there's no means, as in uh, time, money, mm -hmm. or of all that. And I think um, I wanted to, to um, ask you how uh, to the, navigate around yeah, this. Navigate around the I selling out or the... Yeah. Do you know it? Yeah, like you don't have all the means as in commercial art. So how do you navigate those troubles? And the, the thing is, when you're doing things DIY, you have less means like economic means or uh, material means when you're doing art from, from the margins or do I why? Well, you do, it's always materials. Mm -hmm. It's always <laughs> materials, especially in cities. I mean, there's wood lying around everywhere and the first Wednesday, is it, of every month, you, there's tons of shit out there you can mm -hmm. use, you know. It's kind of a, it's whether you are prepared to experiment, you know, just grab anything. There's half pots of paint being put out. There's all sorts of things, you know, just really, you just, you navigate by your passion to work. And your, you know, that passion should allow you to let go of, I want a, I, know, I want a paintbrush this wide and some red paint. Well, it's not there, so change. You'll have to pick up some household white down the road and old bit of wood, you know, and make some charcoal. You know, there's a way, and I'm not, you know, belittling it. I mean, you have to find a way. I mean, look at Picasso's early stuff, all that stuff on wood that he found on the streets. You know, he, he had to find a way. He wasn't, he wasn't rich in the beginning. It's kind of, you see other artists that have done that, bits of paper, bits of card, bits of everything, you know, and that's how you navigate. But you have to have the passion and the drive the belief in yourself, that's what you're talking about, belief in yourself. If you don't believe in yourself, then you won't do it. That's, that's it. You'll just get pushed down, pushed down, pushed down, because you think you haven't got it. You haven't got the right things. You know, and it's frustrating because you want to use a brush, but you haven't got one, so do something else. You know, that's how you navigate it. But you have to believe in yourself. And that's a difficult one sometimes. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> Sorry, I can pass you out. Um, so, hi. <laughs> I was going to ask you originally about like how, um, how you manage like in this society that is always trying to push down art, especially the art that it comes from a more uh, mm, dissident way or that questions like society itself. How do you manage to, to continue and not get, like how do you not get demotivated while doing it? And like taking what you were saying before, like this crisis that come like with creating art, that is just like emotionally and from the outside world. Like how do you manage to navigate through like existential crisis during the artistic process, uh, plus the outside that it's always like trying to shut down alternative art. Well, I think it's, I mean, it's a, it's a big question because I mean, there's no reason for you not to go back home, get a piece of paper out and start doing art. Now, if you're gonna start doing art and think, oh, I'm gonna sell this for $100 or something, 
then forget it. You know, you won't do it because it's not going to happen. It's not part of the story, is it? The story is that you want your hand to connect with here and to go down on there. Not on a screen, just a piece of paper, a blank piece of paper. I mean, I can look at a blank piece of paper all day. I don't have the courage to make the mark. It takes me, I walk around and I rearrange my pencils again. I get very nervous and then suddenly I just make a mark. Once you've made a mark, then you're off. But you can do that at home at any time. It's what you want to put, if it's again, it's how you, how you, you look but you don't see, you're looking for a result that you don't know is going to happen because you haven't done the drawing, you haven't done the painting, you haven't done the selling, you haven't done anything. So you need to see, get in, piece of paper, do it. Then you've got something, and then you can maybe see what you've done, you might screw it up and start again. You know, it doesn't matter, but it's tangible. I think a lot of artists, they kind of, work with the intangible in the sense of where it's going to go into a gallery, into a, someone's collection, into the... It, it's got nothing to do with you. I mean, I'm not interested in all that crap. You know, I never have been. You know, I tried it once when I was very young. I went to a gallery and they treated me like a piece of shit. And I thought, never again. God, I'm not interested in, in that. So, you know, but I'm interested in doing my work. And it accumulated, and obviously, would I be sitting here if crass hadn't happened? Who knows? Maybe not. Because you're all familiar with that work, and it's really been a stepping stone to the other world that I'm, you know, showing in now. But, you know, that I was fortunate enough to decide to live with people, to share projects, to build up a whole thing. You know, we had another band before Crest. It was equally, you know, on tour and doing all sorts of things. But, you know, the, for some reason, Crest suddenly took off. We, we, didn't, we didn't do it for that. It that just did. For some reason, it struck a chord and it got bigger and bigger. And um, but we all decided that 1984 was the cut-off time. If we can't say it in the next seven years, we can't say it at all. So that was the aim, to say as much as we could, in the best way that we could, with the art, with the words, with the graphics, with the films, and then that's it, call it a day. You know, and, that's, and that worked for us. You know, um, it left us as a band, as a group of people reeling. The, the band is, 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 is fractured now. Uh, five of the people are very close, but two of the others are not so close. I mean, I wouldn't wish that, but it just happens, you know. If they were to walk through the door, I'd have a cup of tea. You know, I don't have any ill feelings, but there's been, you know, um, a split. But there was never a split in the day, and that was important because we'd agreed on the, the foundation of what we were trying to say, and that agreement was, was true to the very end. And then when that all stopped, and we had to face reality, <laughs> of parents and the kids growing up and all the rest of it, you know, suddenly you, and how, how tired you are. I was absolutely wasted. You know, I, I was not very well because, you know, it never stopped for me once we come off tour, because I did all the films and the lighting and, you know, on tour, and when I get back, I start on the next piece of work. So it was continual, continual, continual. But, um, yeah, well, I chose to do it, so that's fine. Fine for me. It's, you know, and I had no regrets, and I had, would never have, have uh, continued if I decided, no, I'm not doing it anymore. You know, I wanted to be part of that, and it's, it was a very a good project, a really good project. I mean, we did finish, when we finished Crest, we were really, really upset. We thought we'd ruined a whole generation. Really, we, was, we were really worried that we'd actually fucked a generation of young people up. And it took a while, two or three years, when people started to write and say how much they'd got from it, that we started to get confident again that, okay, we didn't. <laughs> we didn't, you know, we, we give, we've given a lot of people a, a life, you know, to, and then the courage to say, no, no, I'm going to lead my life this way. And that's been really rewarding, you know, really rewarding. Yeah. Mm -hmm.
Yes, I think it's a good one to finish the... Um, it's only about uh, what are you, what inspires you today? What are you doing in your free time? And you talked about your garden and or making cakes or listening to music. What warms your heart nowadays and inspiring you uh, apart from continually making art? What inspires me? Yes. If you want to share something that... I don't know really. I mean, situations that can inspire you to something, can't they? I mean... Uh, I'm going through a quite a sort of uh, a rough time at the moment with my brother who is, who is dying. He has not much time left. So I've been doing a project with him, and uh, which has been kind of... We get on very well. We always go on a holiday together each year. And um, he was uh, diagnosed with asbestos lung at Christmas. So and it's very uh, virulent. It's, it's, it's a horrible, horrible thing to watch. Anyway, so I started interviewing him with questions that were funny, some heavy, some all sorts of things. And we had a laugh. He's a very humorous, kind man. And um, so I did two sessions of that. And then I did another project with him, which involved a lot of the children that we used to work with who are now adult, and who loved my brother. So I wrote to them and let them know what was happening, and they all written back saying what they got from him personally. So last week I read all the 19 letters from the kids to him. And uh, yeah, he was, yeah, in his very quiet way, he nodded and understood he, he's very compass mentis, there's, there's nothing wrong there. But um, it sort of, I loved it because it showed him his worth. He's a very modest man and he would never take credit for anything. And so reading all these testimonies from these children was very, uh, yeah, very moving, very beautiful. So I don't know quite what I'm going to do with the filming and the questions yet. I don't know how to use that. It's just a bit raw at the moment, but um, I'll do something. Yeah, I'll do another project just on his deathbed. <laughs> <laughs> we we laugh at it because we have to, you know. And yeah. you know, you go in today or you go in tomorrow. <laughs> but because it's too much, otherwise it's too painful in the family, the, the grandchildren, and blah 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 blah. So yeah, it's um. They've really appreciated the projects that we've been doing. And there's a lot of information there that will help after. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Yeah. So yeah, artwork comes from ridiculous places. You know, I would never have guessed that I would be doing that. But it was my contribution to his life, you know. Okay, so I think we're done here. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Hope you enjoyed it. And thank you, G, for coming. Well, thank you for us. all coming. That's very, very kind. Very kind. And uh, I've enjoyed it enormously. I wish I could have heard better. I think because the chairs were... First, they were put back, and the monitors are f facing that way, so I can't actually hear... Mm. Here, these two, the chairs. I asked the chairs to be pushed closer to you lot, so they didn't adjust the speakers. So it's been a lot of guesswork. Yeah. I hope I got the spot. I think it was fine. <laughs> Yay! Okay. So thank you. Thank, thank, thank you, you very much. You can all pogo now. <laughs> <laughs> okay.